Welcome back to episode three of the Print On Demand Playbook podcast. We're your hosts, Kerry Egler and Adrian Von Arks. We're super excited to be here. In today's episode, you definitely want to stay tuned because we're going to be talking about AI for print on demand, for art, generating art. I mean, so many cool things we talk about in this podcast. Chat GPT, Dolly, the new uh, image creator, text to image inside Canva. So you definitely don't want to miss it. AI is taking over the world. Let's do it. Adrian, what's going on, my man? What is going on, man? I am happy to be here for episode number three. This is can, super dude, exciting. I yeah. can't believe we're doing can this. Can I just tell you? Like, yeah. I just want to tell you how like, I'm just pumped about this podcast. Like, We had so much fun recording yeah. the first two episodes. Now we're recording some yeah. more episodes. Um, I'm pumped yeah. about it. So I'm, I'm really excited. This episode gets me really, really excited because this has been like taking over my world the last few weeks. <laughs> so I've been diving into to AI more, but... How's your week going? I also want to just want to know how you're doing. How's your week going? Good. It's going good, man. It's going really good. I am going to the Philippines with my, my wife in a couple of weeks. So we're just kind of like finalizing plans for that. I'm super fired up. I used to live in Thailand. I lived there for seven months when I started my entrepreneur journey. But I've ne- and I've been to a lot of Southeast Asia, but I've never been to the Philippines. So is it like um, is it like vacation or like like what do you do in the Philippines? It's so, I no yeah, idea. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of like a vacation. Like we're, you know, we, we plan on hanging out on a lot of beaches, doing some surfing. I didn't know they had like an Island, uh, an area called Shargo, oh, wow. which is like their famous surfing area. So that's super cool. We're going to El Nido, which from what I understand is like the most popular kind of tourist area. Um, but all these places are super tropical, have beaches and, like the photos look so much like Thailand. I lived in Koh Samui in the Gulf of Thailand. It was it's super tropical little island. So I imagine these to kind of like bring back those kind of vibes. Um, and then we're actually starting in an area called Cebu, which is famous for swimming with whale sharks. So ever since what? I first saw this on, I have a friend called Christian LeBlanc. He has a, he's really big on like YouTube and Instagram. He's a channel called Lost LeBlanc. Um, where he creates travel videos and they're so freaking good. Like literally I've never seen better travel videos. The one he creates and his favorite country is the Philippines. He creates videos all around the world, but his favorite country is the Philippines. So he has a lot of content on there. So I was watching his videos and I saw him swimming with whale sharks and I was like, Oh my God, like I need to do this. It became like a bucket list item. So now I'm just like, so fired up the tour is booked. We're going to be there swimming with whale sharks. It's just going to be like a whole lot of just like fun, relaxation. I will be working like while I'm there, but I'm going to try to like chill out. So looking yeah, forward to it. For sure. Dude, yeah. I've a fun fact. You? I've only, I've only been out of the country one time and that was for my honeymoon oh. to Cancun. And uh, no that's way. only, I've never been like over to that side of the world. So I, I, I literally like know nothing. It's interesting. Um, it's very different. I'm, it's very different. The nice I'm thing about the state so is you have like pretty much every climate. Like you yeah. got Florida and Hawaii, which are tropical. You got beautiful sunny Phoenix, where I live, which is like dry and sunny and warm. You've got you know where you are, kind of like the Midwest. Yeah. You've got you've got Cascadia, you've got horrible Pacific Northwest. <laughs> okay, what's that? Let me tell you about no. Let me tell you about Oklahoma, really quick. <laughs> Last week. Uh, not maybe not last week, but the week before. Week before last, it was sub zero degrees, freezing, like death cold. Right then, last week it was seventy degrees all week. Then Whoa. last night, last night we had uh, thunderstorms and torna- possible tornadoes. So wow, it's like Oklahoma is wild. And then today it's like it's nice today. It's fifty fifty five, and it's back to cold like in a couple of days. So you know. Oklahoma is oh, wild. It man. could literally be, it could literally be like eighty, and then like twenty the next day. Like it's insane. That's Whatever. crazy. That's kind of it. Kind of reminds me of Denver a little bit. Um, yeah. When I lived in Denver for a year, like the weather, it was just like freezing cold one day, and then like the next week, it could be actually warm. It was very just temperamental. Um, I never yeah. really knew like what Oklahoma weather was. All I know is that there's lots of tornadoes. Um, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's just like, it's true. I've never seen one. I've lived here, lived here all my life, never seen a tornado, but they've Crazy. definitely been close, been close to me. Uh, yeah. and, you know, I, I kind of like tornado weather. I'm kind of weird, but, um, <laughs> I like, I like the spring. I like, like, I I like love... the monsoons we get in the summer here in Phoenix. 
So yeah. I, I feel you, man. You could call me a weirdo too. I love monsoon weather. Like my wife and I will like turn off our lights. We'll like open the blinds, maybe grab some wine and we'll just storm watch out our window for like half an hour. It's amazing. It. It's beautiful. I love it. I love sitting on the porch when it's just like humid and warm and there's just like yeah. tornadoes, not tornadoes, but like the <laughs> clouds and like giant tornadoes can, coming that way. Feel, like there's, there's very much like a specific feeling in the air when it's like tornado weather like it just it's just sure. interesting anyways yeah we gotta dive in man we're like we could blabble yeah, on here go. forever um yeah, let's dive let's in go. very excited for this I'm episode excited. episode number three uh ai for art and print on demand uh mainly what we want to talk about today is how you can use the power of ai how you can leverage it in your print on demand business and yeah. i just want to start by saying that you know ai is a hot thing right now a lot of people talking mm -hmm. about it and I was really like, I've been aware, I listened to some podcasts that, that talk about AI and different things, but really these last couple of weeks, I've been diving into it with the mindset and the framework or the frame in my mind of, of thinking, how does this apply to print on demand? Um, yeah. If you have a print on demand business, obviously, you know, we do print on demand. And so how does this apply mm -hmm. to us? And I've been really kind of coming up with these kind of like step-by-steps. Okay. This is how you can actually use it right now. Um, and so it is incredible. I know we're, we're really going to like dive into it super deep, so many incredible use cases for it. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. I, I want to talk about the tools. I want to talk about, um, how you can use it, kind of what some strategies are, uh, and the ways that I've really just been, been using it the last few weeks here. And, yeah. uh, I'm super pumped to dive in. So let's do it. Yeah. So yeah. let's start can, by just talking I, about, oh, yeah, no, no, jump in, jump in. I was just going to add one thing real quick. Like, I feel like AI like came out of nowhere. Like, Me too. you know, ChatGPT was dropped in November, like literally two months ago, less than two months ago. And now you're hearing about AI everywhere. I feel like in October, September, like you didn't hear about it nearly as much. Right. And I think a lot of people are just hearing about it now for the first time. And they're hearing like, oh yeah, it's like, it's new, it's cool, but it's got a long way to go. But like you and I were talking about this before we hopped on this podcast and we were saying like, we're already using it. Like we're already finding ways to use it for our businesses. And I think that the, like, I want to let people know, like, yes, it, it it's not perfect and it's going to continue to improve over time. But guys, like you can use this now, like you can use this to save you a ton of time and you can even use this to save you money right now. Um, so, and I think yeah, in a lot I of cases, as we talk about it more, people will kind of get a better understanding of that. I think in a lot of cases, and not only is it going to save you time and money, but it's actually going to make your products and artwork even better than mm. you can do yourself. Obviously mm -hmm. there may be people listening to this podcast that are like amazing artists and we're this right. episode is not meant to like poo poo on your art. I'm sure you're amazing. Right. But in a lot of cases, right. a lot of people that we work with, we both have our courses and programs. Um, a lot of people that yeah. we work with, like we're not artists. I don't consider myself like right. a graphic artist. And so um, these tools, oh my gosh, they just make it so much easier and quicker and faster and cheaper to yeah. create really high quality stuff in a lot yeah. of different ways, right? Yeah. So let's dive into Content, that. Content, art, so many ways to use it. Let's start off by just talking about, so for, for people listening out there, maybe you just like, you might be listening to this, you're like, AI, artificial intelligence, like I can't even wrap my mind around that. What is this? What are we talking about? And listen, I'm not, definitely not a coder. I, I don't have any experience in that. Don't know anything about it. But essentially what we're talking about here is using uh, technology and using um, software to do tasks for us or give us information that's essentially what we're talking about, right? You think about all your favorite softwares and they do all these different things. These things we're talking about are simply, you know, code and robot type stuff that's able to do things for us or create these things very quickly and efficiently. And so um, we talked a little bit about already about why you should care about this. And the reason, the big reasons you should care about this, if you're a print on demand seller, if you're in apparel, you have any kind of online business is that these tools, these AI tools can write emails for you. They can write ads for you. They can write sales copy for you. Um, they can write product descriptions for you. Those are just the text blog things. Articles. Yeah. Content. Blog articles, content, for social media. They can give you ideas for t-shirt designs and apparel designs mm -hmm. or any print on demand products, ideas for videos, ideas for content. Right. But then 
when we take it this step further, some of these tools can actually create art for you that you can then put onto print on demand products and sell, mm -hmm. or you can sell in different ways uh, via maybe digital files, digital art, different things like that. Mm -hmm. And so um, we've talked about a lot of these benefits, right? Like there's a lot of, a lot of benefits to them, but uh, one more benefit I want to talk about that I want to explore with you a little bit is copyright and trademark. So, mm. you know, you can create art with these, these softwares. We're going to get into specific softwares. And if you look in the terms and conditions of these, of these AI softwares, they are all copyright and trademark free. And they specifically mm. say that you can use them um, to your, you know, commercially, you can sell them and make money. And there are no like stipulations around that. You simply just ask these softwares to create some art for you. It pops out a piece of art. You can download the very high quality version of that. And then you can do basically whatever you want with that art because this is original art. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Is that crazy? No, like, yes. First, yes, that's absolutely crazy. And I love that, you know, there's no, I think that that's going to be a question that so many print on demand sellers are going to have like, okay, this is cool, but can I actually use this like commercially to sell and there not be any repercussions? Because we all know that one big problem with print on demand is there are marketplaces, unfortunately, like Etsy, um, a lot of people will like steal people's designs and they'll make it digital and then they'll sell it on Etsy and print on demand sellers won't know that they'll just go on and they'll be like, Oh, this is a really cool design. I want to put this on a shirt. They'll go buy that, but th they won't know that that was actually uh, infringed on. That was not an original design. And unfortunately that could come back to hurt. Even you as just the unknowing buyer of that design. So to know that these are, you know, free for commercial use, I feel like is going to be very liberating. And I, I just wanted like every print on demand seller to know this because that is really huge. You know, it's, it's hard to create things original. It's even hard when you see designs online that you want to buy to know if they're totally original. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. I'm super pumped about it's that. It was actually a question. One of my first questions when I was using it, I was playing around in the AI, um, the, the art for Canva. And I was like creating these designs and, you know, they were kind of hit or miss. Um, but I was like, are these all totally original? Like if someone said the exact same thing, if someone put in the exact same description, would it just spit out this, the exact same like design or would it spit out something completely original or is it taking some design online <laughs> and using that? But from what I understand is that like, no, these are totally original, which is just, it just kind of opens up the floodgates, especially as it gets better and more sophisticated and creates better, more accurate, you know, art. Like from what I understand, a lot of this AI is, and maybe like, I'm still trying to grasp this and you can Me correct too. me if I'm wrong, Carrie, but like, me too. I'm still trying to grasp it. But a lot of it, I believe is machine learning, meaning uh -huh. it's supposed to continue getting better over time as people continue inputting data and then kind of feeding information to the algorithm, whether it's like way off or something like that. Yeah. Um, but from what I understand, it will be getting better as time goes on and more people use them. Um, and if I that's the right. case, then that's super exciting. I, I think, I think you're exactly right. And that's kind of, mm -hmm. I think something that I, yeah, that I, everybody's listening, you know, that you, that I would want you to know is that this AI, like, which is a little scary, but it's, it's <laughs> it only so going creepy. to get, it's only, to go, only going to get smarter. It's only going to get better quality, uh, more accurate to what you're putting in. And, and that, I, the reason I say that's a little bit scary, cause that's really cool, but it's a little bit scary because like, Obviously, how smart does it get? Does it replace it's us? Gonna like, get <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> yeah. get creepier. It's gonna get creepier. Now, you know, I listened to um, either a podcast or a video the other day that talked to. I've been I've been just shoving my brain full of AI information because it's so interesting. That just talked about you know at some point with AI, and I think it may have even been Elon Musk that said something along these lines, or has has said similar things. Is at some point the AI will get so smart that governments will have to regulate it. Like they will, they will have to say, okay, you know, AI can only do these certain things. Like right now with chat GPT, uh, which I really want to get into these specific tools, but right now with chat GPT, like you can't ask it, 
you know, about murdering someone or, you know, like stuff right, like right. that, right? Like it can't do certain things. And that's, that's, that's for the good. That's, the, we don't want, we're not, I, I think these companies creating these AI tools, like they're not trying to kill humans, right? Like they're, they're no. not trying to yeah. like have AI take over the world, but we're trying to make these tools where they are useful for, uh, for people like us, business owners and, and people, just any kind of people. But, um, so that's going to be interesting as it gets smarter, right? Is like, it's it probably, there's probably always situations where it's going to be used for bad. Cause there are people that use everything for bad. There's always those people, the party yeah. poopers. Yeah. But anyways, it, it is really interesting. And I think it will get smarter over time. It will get better. But mm-hmm. if, if you're good with it, Adrian, let's dive into like some specific tools. Cause a lot of people listening, yeah. They, they probably don't even have any idea about AI. Some of you guys might, but let's talk about some of these tools. The first let's one go. I want to talk about is, is text-based. It's called ChatGPT. It is probably the most popular uh, of, of all the AI tools. And basically what it is, if you're not familiar with it, you can go just go Google it, ChatGPT, which is Googling it is an interesting thing to say because a lot of people say it's going to replace Google. This has been a big topic of of discussion. But what chat GPT is, is basically you just ask it anything text and it will give you text answers back. It will talk to you. It's a chat tool and you can Mm -hmm. ask it pretty much anything. Obviously, that's not violent or, you know, some different things. Um, You can ask it anything and it is shockingly good. Um, One thing I want to add before we we just talk about a little, little bit more is just to kind of give you a gauge on how fast this is taking over the world is chat mm. gpt got to 1 million users in like 10 days from oh, launch launched to 1 million insane. users in 10 days and i've seen charts where they kind of compared that to some of the bigger companies like google and apple and all these kind of things and um you know amazon some of these companies took months and months 3 6 months to get to a million users some of these companies took years to get to a million users and this chat gpt tool 10 days and it is mind blowing. So, yeah. do you want to do you want to talk a little bit more about how you've maybe used it? And I, I'm happy to jump in wherever. Yeah. I, I okay. So so after we talked about it in our episode number two predictions for print on demand predictions for 2023, we, we talked about the rise of Chat GBT. And after talking about that, and you and me talking about it a little bit, and you were like pulling up like Chat GPT searches in real time, I was like, all right, I need to play with this. I've heard so much about it. I keep hearing about it on podcasts. Like it literally seems like it came out of nowhere overnight. And then all of a sudden I heard about it everywhere. So I made an account since our last recording. I played around with it and I asked it to create me a blog article for my online clothing brand. And it was amazing. Like it was absolutely incredible. It was kind of like a top 10 uh, list. I said, you know, create this top 10 list on some subject in like written in a casual tone. And it just spit it all out, maybe within a minute, two minutes. And I was like, this is, first of all, this actually does kind of sound like my writing. And secondly, this is about as good as it would have been if I wrote it, except I would have spent insane amount of hours like researching and trying to find all the sources and and like trying to figure out what to use in it and stuff like i remember i created a blog article a while ago and i spent hours on it and like now with chat gbt that could have been reduced to probably 30 minutes i would have just had chat gbt write it out and then i would have just combed through it you do want to go through this stuff and just make sure it's all accurate and you know tweak any make any little tweaks but it does like 80 to 90% of the work for you and i was just blown away i was like wow like i was very i had put very few blog articles out because of how long it took and blogs you know it's kind of seo it's kind of the long game and so there's not as much incentive as there is for spending that time on things like running ads or like something that has a quicker return so I think a lot of print on demand sellers, they're they're kind of like, you know, they're intrigued by blogs, but they just they're not overly excited about it. And when you think about it, they're like, well, I either got to spend a whole bunch of time writing these blog articles, which aren't going to have an immediate effect on sales in most cases, or I got to hire somebody to write these blog articles. But with ChatGPT, that kind of solves the problem. And I think that a lot of print on demand business owners, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot of them creating blogs and just pumping out content, like at yep. like a crazy clip that we've never seen before because they have this like super helpful tool that does most of the work for you. 
That's yeah, just one I mean, of so many ways print on demand sellers can yeah. use it too. Like it's crazy. We can, and we, yeah, we talked a little bit about, you talked about blogs, but I mean, product descriptions, right? Like mm -hmm. all you do with chat GPT is you say, write me a product description about a product. You know, you could say about a piece of jewelry that says this, you know, says, I love you mom on it. Right. Or like, write me yeah. a product description about a t-shirt that says, you know, whatever. Um, and, and it would just pop out a product description, uh, social media posts. If you want, like, you could ask chat GPT, yeah. write me 20 tweets about X, Y, Z, you know, all that stuff. Um, but I think my favorite way that I've used chat GPT and I've the favorite, my favorite way that I've been using it more is for idea inspiration for pretty much anything, like just mm. ideas to get inspiration. Um, mm -hmm. and before I was using chat GPT, you know, I would go to Google and I would, I would be searching Google, right? Like trying to find... Mm -hmm. But now with ChatGPT, so as an example, while you were chatting there, I went on to ChatGPT and I said, you can do things like this. I said, give me 10 ideas for a t-shirt about monster trucks, right? And so it popped yeah. out 10. They're shockingly good. Like they're they're very good. Like monster truck fan for life, born to drive, uh, uh, born to crush, uh, crush it like a monster truck. And then I said, well, I don't like those. Give me 10 more. So then it came out with fear the monster truck, uh, you know, power and glory monster, like just all these awesome ideas, right? Another one I did the other day was I said, uh, give me, can you tell me some design ideas for a funny t-shirt about dogs and wine combining mm. niches together? Mm -hmm. The first one it gave me, wine, why not adopt a rescue dog? Wine a little, bark a little, <laughs> right? Like, um, yeah, I yeah. just want to drink wine and pet my dog. Uh, awesome. Why not take a walk with your furry best friend? Like, uh, it is like the, the inspiration for designs, you can enter your niche and say yeah. for this kind of product, give me ideas and it will do that. Um, Facebook ads, Instagram ads. I mean, like mm -hmm. you can have it right copy for those. It, the list just goes on and on. But I just think that as, as business owners who are trying to be creative so often, right. In the print on demand mm -hmm. apparel space, we're always having to be creative write yeah. this, create it's exhausting. that. <laughs> and, and, and so I constantly just find myself staring at a bank blank page. Mm -hmm. Like, what do I do next? Right. And mm -hmm. now I have this chat assistant that I can just ask it, <laughs> give me some inspiration yeah. on this topic. And right. it, it does a really like a shockingly great job of giving you, giving me like really good ideas. So that's pretty awesome. I totally agree. I, I actually did the exact same thing in chat GPT. I, I wrote um, 10 popular funny fitness t-shirt ideas and it they're, they're good. Like sweat they're really is good. fat crying, gym and tonic. Um, I thought they said rum. Sweat is my fairy dust. I lift, therefore I brunch. Uh, you know, <laughs> sweat is fat cussing. Like these are actually pretty hilarious. And a lot of them are ones I've actually seen before. So yeah. like- I, I don't know how they're coming up with these, but I like they're, they're good inspo. Um, and I also did the cross niche. I said like, you know, come up with like, and this was actually in the Canva. Um, so we're talking about chat GPT, but there's also the AI for Canva now. And I was using the Canva feature and saying like, come up with ideas for like cats and cats and books. Cause there's a lot of overlap with like cat lovers and book lovers. Yeah. Right. And so uh, it was like you cross niche, like, tell me, tell me things. And it came, I, like, I don't have it right in front of me, but I remember it was like, cats and books are perfect. Like that was like <laughs> one of the ideas. And I was like, they're actually, most of them are pretty spot on. Like in this, what about fitness? There's one that I would probably say is not spot on where it says, I'm not arguing. I'm just yelling. Be oh no, never mind. It is spot on. I'm not arguing. I'm just yelling because I'm lifting. I thought it said, I'm not arguing. I'm just yelling because I'm right. Um, but even that, like all 10 of these, could be shirt designs yeah. and yeah it's just crazy like you know like a, right now a lot of people hire freelancers to like create content for them for social media to write blogs for email marketing that kind of stuff and honestly the stuff i'm seeing from chat gpt is at the same level or better than a lot of these freelancers that you hire and of course there's different levels of freelancers there's some that are unreal and i'd be shocked sure like, like these guys are the best of the best and, and they're, 
you know, but then there's the ones that, you know, you don't pay so much for, and maybe they're not English as a first language. And you, you know, they're just like, they're newer, not as experienced. And like, I think chat GPT could write something as good as a lot of, you know, those people. And, and, and like, let's, I don't let's be real see people lose jobs, but I do love finding ways to help print on demand sellers save money and mm-hmm. save time. And that's, yeah, that's what we're here to do. Like at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. we definitely don't hope that this like puts people out of work. We hope that it's a tool that helps people make more money and helps people find more opportunity. Um, But I was going to say, you know, another point that's not really for this podcast, but just interesting to add on to your conversation you were just having is Mm. the reality is there's going to be a lot of people that, you know, you could hire to freelance that are just going to be using this tool. Yes, totally, totally, (laughs) totally. Like I was literally just going to say the same thing after you finished talking. I'm like, dude, these freelancers literally could just like be hiring, you know, put out their rates and then use chat GPT and send it over. And I like, I don't think that's like the honest or kind of like, you know, moral thing to do, but people are always trying to find ways to game the system. And I bet you anything, there's going to be people doing this. Um, it's smart, but I don't think it's ethical. You know what I mean? Yeah. I totally so, hear you. Yeah. So anyways, Hilarious. so moving on. So, so just the last thing to kind of add to chat GPT, and then I want to move into the art because that, that gets me mm. really excited as well. Chat GPT mm. is free and yes. it, it yeah. doesn't cost anything at all. There's no trials or anything like that. And, you know, from what I understand, like it's going to be free. Now the other tools, we can't say the same thing for those. And sometimes some of these are already paid tools. But ChatGPT, from what I, from everything I've read, the founders are like, no, this is like a Google, like this is going to be free, you know, because it is, they want it to change the world, not just be, mm-hmm. you know, this little tool that you use. Like, I mean, Google has changed the world, uh, definitely, right. you know, over the last right. 20 plus years. So ChatGPT is free. Um, I want to dive Can into the art one thing side. About that? Yes. Go ahead. Can I say one thing about that? You know, making it free doesn't mean that they're not going to make money. How do you think Google makes money? Advertising. Ads. So you don't think that eventually ChatGPT is going to have ads? Maybe print on demand sellers will be having ads on ChatGPT. Who knows, right? But like, yeah. there, there's other ways for them to make it money and keep it free to use for people like us. And if that's going to keep it free and it means that print on, more, print on demand sellers can have free access and get all this value and just have to see some ads, that is so worth it. It's like, you know, similar to Google. Yeah. If I, I wish I could run ads on chat GPT right now. Cause there is, <laughs> man, there's, there's tons of people using it. Oh, I was curious yeah. uh, how many users it currently it has. How many users does chat GPT currently have? I was going to ask chat GPT. <laughs> it's probably going to be like uh, a million more by tomorrow. Oh, it's not able. It's not familiar. <laughs> It's not familiar with the chat bot called chat GPT. Maybe I spelled it wrong. We'll find <laughs> out though, but it's, yeah, it's probably tens of millions at this point. Cause that those numbers are really yeah. old, but anyways, yeah. um, so let's talk about the art. So I think the big question people would have. So first of all, when we talk about art, basically what we're talking about is you can give a software, not chat GPT does not do this, but we're going to talk about some softwares that do. You can type in a text prompt. I can say, Show me a picture of Adrian Von Arks sitting in the Philippines on a beach, right? You can type in a text prompt and it will create that image for you. And mm-hmm. it's wild. It is just wild. But I think the big question people will have, like, and the big like kickback is like, oh, the art's not going to be any good. You only, mm-hmm. Like computers won't be able to interpret it. And I just want to like, Anybody that's listening out there, if you are skeptical of this technology, like some of them do stink. And we're going to talk about mm-hmm. that. Some of the software stink at this. Some of them are shockingly good. And I don't even think, Adrian, I don't even think you are aware. I need to actually show you some of these. I don't even think you're yeah. aware of how incredible this can be. Um, it, it's pretty shocking. Yeah. So. I mean, totally. I And I want to see them like all I've actually really played with on, on the art side of things is the Canva text to image AI generator. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm sure it's going to get better right now. The results were very mixed. I would not say that I would use any of the art that it came up with yeah. me. I didn't spend a ton of time on it, but it didn't really meet my standards. Um, and I think a lot of print on demand sellers will agree, but I do think it's going to get better. 
And I'm excited to hear about these other ones because, you know, it doesn't, Canva text to, uh, image AI generate isn't the only one out there. The only yeah. reason why I like what, you know, why I wanted to get to know this one is because I use Canva, you use Canva, mm -hmm. so many print on demand sellers, like this is like a flagship tool for us. It's something that yeah. I'm in every single day. And I think a lot of other print on demand sellers would agree. So like they already have access to this. Um, but yeah, tell me more about these other ones. Like I'm, I'm curious because I don't really know about the other ones. Well, I do want to talk about Canva just a little bit because first of all, yeah, we freaking love Canva. Like oh, this is no yeah. dog on Canva. Canva is incredible. It is well mm -hmm. worth the money. You know, you guys definitely go yes. check it out. Like if you're not familiar with Canva, it's it's awesome. Um, we can mm -hmm. talk about Canva all day. Maybe that's another episode that we just talk about well, all the things episode, Canva yeah. can do because uh, it's amazing. But the text to image feature it's just not on the level yet of some of these other softwares i'll talk about sure and you know we both saw a video from our buddy uh ryan hogue on his channel shout out yeah. ryan he's awesome you guys go check him out um totally. where he he kind of he went over the canva uh feature i watched his video and even in the video i didn't feel like the art like it it, it wasn't very good in the video like he he was putting in things that I think he had pre-planned to put in. And I was still kind of like, mm. that doesn't really look like what he's putting in. And in the Canva one, even, even the examples it gives you, it's like type in this and you type it in and it's like, it's not very good. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. sorry. It's yeah. just not there yet. I think it will I, get better. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even he was kind of like, uh, you know, in, yeah. in the podcast, he was kind of like, okay, this goldfish looks like it's bleeding from the eyes. <laughs> this one looks cracked out like it's actually hilarious yeah. listening to that podcast episode and like hearing his kind of commentary and i couldn't even see it because he does a lot of his podcasts on youtube and on on you know on like apple podcasts and whatnot and i was listening to it in a podcast and i was like laughing out loud and i was like i need to see what this looks like this yeah. sounds hilarious go look at, but go look at the youtube with it myself but yeah even he didn't sound like overly impressed but you yeah. know i think it's gonna get better um sure. i definitely do and and I, what the only thing that worries me a little bit about that is just that you know if the if if you're in print on demand and and kind of the masses see the Canva version right now, I think they might be turned off a little bit. Whereas mm. there are much better tools. So let's talk about mm. those. Sure. Um, the next step up, I think. Now, let me also say there are like 20, 30, 40 of these different AI art tools, and Crazy. I've. I've kind of played around with maybe 10 to 15 of them. And these are just the conclusions I've come to on a very, very preliminary basis, not having a ton of experience with these. These are just the ones that I feel like can actually be used right now. So mm. the next step up for me from chat GP or from uh, Canva was Dolly too. Um, so Dolly is, it's, you know, it's an, it's an AI generator. I believe there, most of these are built on open AI, which is also the, the AI that, um, chat GPT is built on. So they're kind of mm, all built okay. on this open AI platform. Dolly two is, is the same idea. You type in text, uh, you say, you know, show me a bird riding a motorcycle in the middle of the summer with the sun in the background or whatever. And it will pop that image out. Okay. Dolly two is very good. It's very good. Mm. And, and the way that the, the, I think probably what it's best for, in my opinion, for print on demand sellers is if you're needing like a drawing or like a cartoon or like a, um, you know, something like that, like something uh, maybe a little more basic, I guess you could say, like we just mm. talked about Ryan Hogue, you know, typing in a goldfish or whatever, and it was bleeding from the eyes and it looked like it was cracked <laughs> out. Dolly too. <laughs> is not that it is like if you okay. type it in it's going to give you it's going to give you a pretty solid picture drawing or cartoon or painting of that that you could absolutely use for print on demand and cool. the, one of the things i love about dolly too that it does that i haven't seen so much on the other ai art generators that i've been working with is that you can go in and you can actually edit those photos so like if mm. you were to say uh, show me a goldfish swimming in the sea with, you know, sharks around it. And it yeah. popped it out and like, like it was messed up or something like the AI didn't quite get it. You can actually yeah. use a little tool to highlight an area and you can have it regenerate that area and it will actually fix the pictures like with AI. That's cool. It is freaking cool. And 
Some different. tips also for for Dolly. Well, just mainly one quick tip that I've been mm. using is if it is if it if you're trying to get some artwork that you want to put like on a print on demand product and maybe you want to put some text with it or something like that. If you simply just add on white background <clears throat> onto your text prompt, it does a really good job of just giving you a clean white background that you can just cut out in Photoshop nice. or with a with in Canva, you know, with the background eraser. Um, mm. So, you know, saying something like uh, a bald eagle wearing a bandana with an American flag, and then you mm. just add on a white background, mm. you can actually download the high quality version, just remove the background, and you have original art that you would have paid for otherwise that you just got with AI. That's probably better than and more original than something you would have paid for on Etsy or going to Fiverr right. or whatever. Like, um, it does a really that's, good job and you can put cool. in some I weird stuff. I wonder if you can ask it to have a transparent background. That's kind of like. You, not yet. Yeah. I think that's something it might do specific. in the future, yeah. but yeah. it doesn't do that yet. That would be okay. next level. Yeah. But my favorite so far has just been adding white background on there. Um, yeah. Another thing you can do with it, with, with, with most of these tools, but another thing you can do with, with Dolly is if you don't like what it spit out, you can just regenerate it. It gives mm. you four images at a time. So it gives you four That's variations cool. and you can regenerate it until you get the one you like, or you can edit yeah. it or, you know, like <clears throat> there's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, and it's just really awesome. One other thing I want to add is um, I hope that the next feature I want to talk about comes out very soon. But one of the limitations of all these softwares, especially if you're in print on demand is they don't handle text art like pretty much at all. Like if you mm. ask it to put a, if you add it to put a word on it, on the image or to, mm. you know, like if you ask it for a logo and you say, I want right. the logo to say, you know, Arizona, that's on your shirt. Like I want the logo to say Arizona. It doesn't, Arizona State, Arizona Arizona State, State. Arizona State represent. Uh, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't handle that. Like it, it can't do that right now. I think, I think this okay. is something as it gets smarter that it will be better at. Right. So, you know, that that's one limitation of you can, you can get the art, but then you kind of have to go add your own text if you want to add text to it. I what are your thoughts do, so far? Oh, yeah, I, well, that actually kind of like brings up a question. Like, I wonder what it will do for fonts. Like there's trendy, there's always trendy fonts. There's always popular fonts. I talk about it a lot on TikTok and like, you know, there's there's always new ones coming and like, I, how's it going to do that? Like it, it can't probably, a lot of those fonts you need a commercial license for. So um, not all of them, but a lot of them you do. So I wonder if if, if it's just going to be in kind of like these wacky, like not official font fonts. Like, I, <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. Like, yeah. You That's, know, like, can you I've say like, like, oh, create me, create me like a shirt that says dogs and coffee in Arial Black. Mm -hmm. But if that was one of the fonts that had a commercial license where you had to pay to use it commercially, what would it do? It would just be like, maybe it would say like, oh, I can't, like that's a commercially, I don't know what it would say. Um, if they were smart, it, they, it, it, would, it would pop up and it would say pay $5 <laughs> to access yeah. this font or something like that. Right, awesome. in-app, yeah, in-app purchase, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but one thing I was going to bring up though that is amazing that you can do with these is you can tell it to create art in the style of blank you know, whatever style yes. you want to kind of go along with what you're asking there, right? You're asking it for a font yeah. style, but yeah. one of the, one of the things that people are doing is they'll say in this, in the style of Van Gogh, right? That's a really yeah. popular one, one right now. Yeah. So you, you start thinking about hopefully what I want for anybody who's listening is for, for your mind to be opening up to the possibilities. So think about if you're in a certain niche, right? Let's think about if you are passionate about uh, let's say classic cars, right? You could, you could create this almost new art that's never been seen before where you could say, create me a picture of a 69 Mustang in the style of Van Gogh. And yeah. now you have this Crazy. incredible piece of art where Mustang lovers are like, oh my gosh, I've never seen a Mustang look like that, right? And it's yeah. these incredible art pieces. These are some of the things you can you can do. You can type in things like neon art or mm -hmm. um, Watercolor 3D. Watercolor line art. Or yeah, a cartoon or yeah, watercolor. Um, my brother mm -hmm. was telling me another one that he was using. Um, oh, st he said instead of doing the white background, whereas I was saying to use white background, he was saying use the word sticker. 
So do it in the style of a oh. sticker and it, and that would give him the ability to cut it out really easily. Like it would make Smart. a cleaner image. And Smart. so, yeah. So it's funny because the name of the game when it comes to AI is how good can you get at feeding it the right information? Yeah, and totally. The better information you feed it, the better product it, it spits out. And, and um, you can be really specific. And you know, if, yep. if your brand, like you can be specific on brand, if you, your brand, let's say you have a online t-shirt business and maybe it's about, you know, it could be in a niche, let's say like dogs and coffee, but your, your brand is like almost like cartoony, you know, kind of like, like cartoon graphic kind of designs. Uh -huh. That's kind of your brand. Then you can tell it every time, make it look like a cartoon or something like that. Yeah. I was playing around with it before I was saying, make me line art. I think line art is super cool. And I was like, create some line art designs for me. And it did. And I was like, whoa, I can't believe that you can get so specific already. Yeah. It's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. So that's a little about Dolly too. Now, if, if you're listening on audio, it's D-A-L-L-E-2. It's the mm -hmm. number two. And I'm sure we'll have that like in the show notes. Um, mm -hmm. But real quick about the pricing on that one. So this one's interesting. I watched a couple of videos uh, about this to kind of learn about it. And, uh, and also you can just look at their pricing, but I don't watch a couple of videos as well. So when you sign up for Dolly 2, it gives you 50 image credits uh, up front for free. And um, it's actually, it spits out four images each time, but that only counts as one credit. So you get 50 oh, okay. like generations, if that makes sense. Mm. And then what it does is it, after that, it gives you 15 credits per month uh, for free. So every 30 days, oh, cool. it will give you another 15 credits. Yeah, and yeah. You can use this tool for free if you use it in that capacity, or you can purchase additional credits. Um, and they're they're pretty inexpensive, but you can purchase purchase additional credits, you know, as much as you want. But one of the mm. interesting things that I saw in a YouTube video don't uh, don't take this as necessarily reliable information. I have not <laughs> verified for myself, but one of the YouTubers said that there was actually no uh, there was nothing in their terms and conditions that ha that would uh, bar you from having multiple accounts. So basically mm. like, like they didn't have anything in their terms of service that says you can't have more than one account. So if searches. you opened up a few under different, different email addresses, you could potentially get, you know, more credits, um, under each of those accounts. So okay. take that for what yeah. it is, but it's yeah. early days. It's the wild, wild west of AI right now. So ah, it it's, is. uh, it's, yeah. So with that, I, I, I want to talk about the last tool, um, that I like, again, there's a bunch of other ones and you know, you, you can definitely check those out. There's a ton, but the one that I found that is just light years ahead of anything else. I mean, like I'm telling you, Adrian, when we end this podcast, you need to go sign up for it right now. It will blow your mind. All Actually right. right now, what you should do if you have your computer open is just search, just search mid journey. Uh, like it is in our notes there, click on it and then look at, um, Look at the community showcase. Click on community showcase and just look at some of the art because uh, it will blow your mind. It is unbelievable. Um, Whoa. Yeah. Like it is. This it is, is way better than Canva <laughs> text. Yeah. So, so let's talk about mid journey a little bit. This is the one I've been yeah. using the most. I would say of all of the AI tools, this one's maybe, I guess the hardest to get started with. It's not hard mm. to get started with, but it's it's you actually use it inside of the Discord app. If you have Discord, oh. you can sign up for yeah. Discord and and you give it text prompts inside of Discord, um, and, and it spits out these images. And for anybody that's not familiar with Midjourney, um, obviously most of you guys probably aren't. The artwork is like so realistic and so high detail. If you ask it to be that, so high quality. Like yeah. it, you literally look at this and you just like, it's, it's mind blowing how good it is. Like, it is just yeah. unbelievable. Like this and so, um, in front of a graffiti wall, it looks like a real photo. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, yeah. And, and as you go through there, like you'll see different styles of artwork cause you can ask it, you know, pretty much anything. And, and I mean, it just, it's just incredible. Like I'm just endless oh. opportunity uh, with this tool. So mid journey, um, amazing mid journey just spits out higher quality 
artwork than anything I've seen. And what I will say in my experience, the error rate or the, the times that you're getting like weird things pop out mm -hmm. is very low. Like it's 98% of the time you're getting pretty much exactly what you ask it. I mean, it's, it's, it just seems like it's ahead of all the other tools and you can yeah. ask it the same, the same things like we've been talking about with Dolly is you can say on a white background, or you can say, you know, mm -hmm. as a sticker, um, or you can say, you know, there's one I'm looking at here on my screen that is Carmen San Diego in disguise with fashionable glasses, wide angle, full body photograph, <laughs> HD, right? And they said um, it came out as on a white background, like that could be cut out very easily and used in in a print on demand design on apparel or whatever. Um, so you just kind of kind of learn these prompts, but Crazy. so Mid Journey is just incredible, and um, with Mid Journey. Uh, let me pull back up my notes with mid journey. You actually get hamster on a bike by Pablo Picasso. So funny. Yeah. And it like looked like a Pablo Picasso. And then I saw another yeah. one that was like Van Gogh style. It's just like, this is crazy. You have to go play with it after this. Cause it, you can join the beta yeah. for free and it'll just blow your mind. Dog um, riding a bicycle oil painting by Van Gogh. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. It's, and it it's so like good. Van Gogh. Yeah. So a little bit, let me talk about, I want to talk about the pricing, but also just a little bit about how this one works. Cause they all work a little bit differently with this sure. one. It's inside discord. You type in a prompt. So you just tell it whatever you want. Right. I did the other day, some of the ones I've done, I did a uh, Michael Jordan facing off against Kevin Durant. And I put like ultra realistic mm. because like, Oh, how cool would it be to see that? Right. Like I ask it for Pikachu dunking a basketball. Um, and it just came out with these, <laughs> unreal uh, artwork of Pikachu, like in the air dunking on this massive hoop. I mean, it was super cool, but like all that kind of stuff. That's hilarious. Um, but what it does is you type in your prompt and it pops out four versions of that prompt, similar, like mm -hmm. we talked about with Dolly. And then you have a mm -hmm. couple options. You have the option to give you four more versions of any one of those photos. So, so let's just say you tell it to pop out something and you really like option number three then you can say, give me four more that are similar to option number three, and it will give you four more artworks that are similar. Um, mm. And then the other thing you can do is you can actually upscale the one that you want. So once you find the art that you want, you can press uh, the upscale button and it will make it very, very big and high quality. So you can download it. You can use it on print on demand nice. or whatever. Uh, and then one other quick thing that you can That's do, awesome. which is kind of like next level, is you can actually copy any of those image URLs. So just taking like the, the URL from one of those images that it creates and you can feed it back into the AI and you can ask it for different things. So that's mm. kind of how you could, you could, you could uh, combine niches or you could make similar art. So let's say you typed in neon art. Okay. You just type in neon art. It pops out these abstract art pieces but then you take one of those images when these abstract art pieces, you feed it back in and you say, um, you say, add cats to it. And then you have mm. cat neon art, abstract cat neon art with cats in it and different things. And that's a really cool strategy to like come up with really cool artwork. That's niche focused. Yeah, um, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen some awesome stuff when you start doing that. Like it's, that it's awesome. Cool. That very, very cool. cool. So, Man. Mid journey, so, like mid journey is. Uh, go ahead. Do you have have questions, thoughts that you want to add on that? Before no, I man. For my, it's like I just need like that emoji with like the exploding head. Like that's just, just like how I feel at AI right now. Like a couple months ago, I felt like not many people at all were talking about, especially in print on demand. Yeah. And now you're just hearing about it everywhere, and like just actually trying it for ourselves and hearing what you're saying, and like just the capabilities already can save people time and money, and that's what gets me so excited because that's what. That's what we want to share with people. You know what I mean? So yeah. this is just super cool. I can't, so, like my mind is just blown. I know you can't quite even comprehend it until you start doing it. And it, it's just, yeah. it's crazy. Um, so mid journey is uh, M I D J O U R N E Y. Again, if you're listening on audio, we'll try to put that down in the, um, in the show notes, it's free to get started. You can join the beta. I haven't hit the limit yet, but I think it is somewhere around like, 50 to 75 generations in there um, before it, before it actually wants you to go to a paid plan. And this one is very cheap. It's eight. It starts at $8 per month for 200 generations. 
Wow. So it's pretty inexpensive. And once you see how the, yeah. uh, how good the art is, you're going to be like, Oh my gosh, what you could spit out Dude. 200 new, new print on demand designs for eight bucks. That One are- winning design would pay yeah. that for like years, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, that, so that's my favorite one to use along with chat GPT. Mm-hmm. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, but I want to stop before I get into that. But the last thing I want to talk about is just like the strategy, right? If you're, if you're a print on demand user, how do you go from mm-hmm. nothing to actually having a finished artwork? I want to talk a little bit about that, mm-hmm. but Adrian, do you have anything you want to add before I kind of, kind of go, go sure. on with that? Yeah. So there's one more thing that I did want to mention. Um, and this is just going back to Canva for a sec. So Canva also, aside from the Canva for art, uh, generator tool. They also now have an AI powered writing assistant called magic, Write, uh, magic, Write, I believe, which you can use to do a lot of things, but you can use it to write product descriptions for you. So all you need to do is just create, like, you know, put some text, say like, um, something like a, you know, write a description for a cat and coffee or a cat and books t-shirt and then it'll write a description for you and even if it's not perfect it can get you a long way i was actually pretty impressed to be honest i played around with it sometimes it was kind of off and i was like eh. and then other times i was like i can work with this like this totally yeah. did save me time and i can just make some tweaks and to use that it's actually really simple like um i think everyone has access to it i have the upgraded canva account so i don't know that for sure but essentially you just go to create a design, select doc, then you hit the plus button, select magic, write, And then you write a brief description of the design and it'll spit out a product description for you. So it's awesome. like kind of like chat GPT, but if someone is like much more familiar with Canva and that's kind of where they feel more comfortable right now, not only do they have like an art AI feature in Canva, but they also have that. And I think that that is even more valuable than the art feature because I think it's kind of better than the art feature right now. So I just wanted to mention that, that like that's available for people to use and that's going to save you time. Yeah, for sure. I think Canva, Canva is definitely on board with all the AI stuff. And if you're already a Canva user, like having those tools right there without having to go find them somewhere else, like it's awesome. It's really cool. Yeah. So I love it. All right. So I, I just want to kind of wrap this one up by talking about how I would recommend I guess how we would recommend, I don't want to say we, but how I would recommend that we, that you would use this um, or kind of a strategy for you, a step-by-step. If you're like, this is all really cool. I I think it's really cool, but how do I put it into this palatable kind of method? So Mm. here's how I'm using it. Number one, come up with ideas using chat GPT completely free. Mm. Go out to chat GPT and start at, start asking it for ideas for whatever product you're wanting to sell with print on demand, let's, it could be wall art. It could be um, mugs. It could be t-shirts, hoodies, name something, skateboards, right? Ask it for Mm -hmm. ideas, right? And it's Mm going to spit out a bunch of things. Then you're going to need some artwork for that, for that idea. Select the ideas that you want. Now, if you ask chat GPT for 10 ideas, you could do all 10 with these, with these AI art generators. Absolutely. But just ask it for ideas, talk to it and see what it comes out with to get some inspiration. Next, go to Dolly 2 or Mid Journey and start asking it for the art that you need, right? If we mentioned, like, if you're doing cats and books, you might want a drawing of a cat reading a book. So you go to mm-hmm. Mid Journey and you say, Give me a drawing of a cat reading a book sitting on a chair with a white background or as a sticker or some of these things that we talked about, right? And get the art that you need from uh, one of these AI generators. The next step, once you've got the art, you've downloaded it, put that art into something like Photoshop or Canva, like we've been talking about, bring that art over to Canva, right? Remove the background, get it uh, to where it has a transparent background. And then you want to add your text. And going Mm. back to the first step from ChatGPT, what we were able to do is get a bunch of these text uh, ideas for text to put on these products. So we would go to uh, Canva and we would pop in that art and then we would add the text that we want, customize the font, right? And mm-hmm. once we have that product ready to go, we download the image. And then from uh, from there, it's the same as always, right? We load it right into our print on demand app and we're ready mm-hmm. to sell on our Shopify store or Etsy or wherever, wherever you're selling. Um, Love it. That's how, that's how I'm looking to use it for print yeah. on demand. The only other yep. thing I would add 
to that, and I, and I want you to chime in as well, is mm-hmm. it gets a little bit easier if you're doing stuff that isn't that is more abstract or, or or you know not doesn't require text, right? You can get yeah. finished artwork from some of these uh, AI generators uh, that might be just incredible abstract kind of, but you could add a niche in and have it, you know, something about it be niche and then you could put that on wall art or canvases and different things like that. Um, so that, that removes some of those steps, but that's kind of the process right now. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. That's how I would use it too. Um, I also, I mean, if we're only talking about art, then yeah, that would be the primary way that I would use it. If we're talking about other capabilities like blog articles, yeah. maybe writing some emails, um, some content creation, you know, creating captions for social media posts, like mm-hmm. there's so many other ways that, you know, that I'll be using this as well. Like I said, I, I just use it to create a blog article the other day. Um, and yeah, I mean, like to cre- like Canva alone can do so many things. This is just like, yeah. You know, like I want to encourage people to try this out for themselves and see if it can save them time and maybe money. Um, because if it can, what are you waiting for? It's free, it's available. You know, imagine how many more blog articles you could pump out versus your competitor who's hiring like a freelancer to write their blog articles. Maybe they drop like one a month. You could be dropping like one a week or more, and they're gonna be like, How's this person doing this? But like you can you like you can give yourself a competitive edge already by using this stuff. And um, I think that more people are going to start using it. Um, I think it's going to get more widely adopted. So there's always that kind of like first movers advantage. I always love to be early on with new things because before, you know, things catch fire, especially like advertising, for example, mm-hmm. you know, if you were an early advertiser on Facebook or Instagram, um, like you had a huge advantage. There was just, it was so profitable and like things like this, you know, without everyone else using it, I feel like you can be, you can have a leg up on a lot of competitors and they're going to think you're paying so many freelancers to like do all this stuff and, or like have employees and little do they know, it's just AI pumping it all out for you. Dude. I'm so pumped. It's crazy. I'm so pumped yeah. for, for what it will do yeah. for, not only, you know, print on demand sellers, but I mean, so many different types of businesses. I tend to be, you know, an optimist. I tend to be positive. Like this is going to do good for the world and do good for yeah, entrepreneurs. Right. And, you know, so I I hope that you guys have that mindset as well of how, how this can yeah. enhance the world and not uh, take away from it. Um, but I'm pumped, man. I think that, I think that wraps it up. Any final thoughts? Cool. Yeah, no, I I think that that's a good, great place to end it off. I'm sure people maybe are feeling a little overwhelmed right now if they're brand new to this, but hopefully super excited as well because the possibilities just seem endless at this point. It's like I was intimidated by it. I was I thought it was going to be super <laughs> difficult, and what I found out was it was actually really easy. It, it's not yeah. hard, and that's totally. So I think a lot of people listening, you know, you might be thinking like, ah, but this is probably really hard to use. It's not. It is so it's easy to not. use. I, I really challenge you to go out there and, and and give it a shot. Use some of these tools we talked about in this uh, in this episode. Yeah, like it's as easy as it sounds. I am not a techie person. I've never nope. really been a techie person. I would love to say I am, but I'm just not. I don't feel like I'm super technical. And this was so easy for me to use. Like, I don't care if you're like like 10 or 70, like you can use mm-hmm. this. Just go out and play with it. Like it's that easy. It's awesome. All right, we'll <laughs> see you guys in the next one. Sounds good. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Print on Demand Playbook Podcast. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please help us out by leaving us an honest review on whichever platform you're listening from. Thank you again so much, and we will see you soon.